Guys, welcome back to. Oh, hold on. My oscillator is doing its own thing here. Hold on a second. I'll turn that down. Okay, welcome back to um, the VCV, the ultimate VCV lesson, where I'm going to teach you guys all the really cool, sort of more advanced stuff that I'm using. In the last few weeks, we've been laying down a sort of a framework for modular understanding oscillators, VCAs, LFOs, um, the triggers, gates all the different sort of uh, fundamental components of, of the modular environment. And now we're going to take it a little bit further by looking at some more advanced tools. Now I'm going to limit myself time-wise today because you could go on about each of these tools for hours. I'm going to give myself like 15 to 20 minutes on the upper maximum per topic. And I've got four topics that I want to do today. I want to do shift registers, Turing machines. I want to do patch animation. Um, I want to throw in modes. And then finally, I want to show you how to use VSTs in, in, um, in modular. So we got a lot of work to do. So let's jump straight to it. Now, um, I'm going to zone in on this patch and just explain how a shift register works. It's really simple. Basically, the, the easiest way to think about it is that it takes mono information, like a sequence, and it compounds the voltages and it stacks them on top of each other to sort of form, well, it does form chords, okay? Stacked intervals of, of individual notes that you then connect to multiple oscillators and it can make incredibly advanced sounding chords with very little work from you, okay? So that's basically what a shift register does. I like to think that it's the easiest way to introduce chords or polyphony into the modular environment, which by default is sort of always monophonic. Now, monophonic's great. I love, you know, compounding lots of, multi of of mono lines to make polyphonic music, and that's how we generally work in modular. But the shift register is like a sort of a, a very cool trick just to add chord information. Okay, so let's look very quickly at the routing. Obviously, I'll upload these patches. Um, I wanted to do everything live, but this patch was just too big, so I had to make it make it in pre. But this will be up as, as soon as the video is up, and you guys can download it and, and mess with it if you want. All right, so we've got a clock coming in now. As always, I have this 1 over 16 pulse that's coming in the background in Ableton. It's coming to VCV channel 2, so that's pretty simple. And um, it's standard 1 over 16, and that's coming in. The MIDI to CV is converting it, and it's coming into a clock divider. And that's pretty much the clock section. It's just the gate from Ableton that's coming in into the clock divider. Okay, and I've got to reset to reset all, all the sequences. And... This sequence is running, very simple. We know what the ADDR sounds like. If you don't, go and check out the um, go and check out the previous video where I did a whole bunch of stuff on it. And um, what what what's then happening, of course, is the VCA. We've always got a VCA that's sort of shaping the voltage, and then it's coming into a quantizer. Okay. Now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hack on about this, but very important to understand that the quantizer always stays in C, especially if you're using the QNT this quantizer. Okay. I always leave my notes in C. Is this track in C? No, it's not. It's actually in B flat, A sharp. So how do I compensate for that? Why is the quantizer in C? What we do is we detune the oscillators themselves so that the root pitch of the oscillator is in the key of the song. And then I leave the quantizer in C. So I'm thinking about this with C as sort of a proxy key for the music theory, but it represents the true tonic, which I have um, uh, transposed to by detuning the oscillators themselves. So that's just a little bit of insight on the pitch setup. And then of course comes the most important part, which is the shift register. Now, as I said, all it's doing is it's taking voltage one. So let's say voltage one is C, it comes in, it receives a trigger, and it sends C out through, through output one, which goes to oscillator one. Then it receives another trigger and it, another note comes in from the sequencer, let's say it's A sharp. So now it sends a sharp to, to port one, and it sends C to the next connected port, which is port two. So now you have a chord with A sharp and C. Then it makes another voltage, let's say it's D sharp. Now D sharp comes out through port one, A sharp comes out through port two, and um, the other voltage comes out through port three, and now you've got a three note chord. And it just keeps on sort of bouncing those voltages around, and that's basically the principle of, of a shift register. Okay. So that's my setup in terms of the pitch. The, I've got a simple clock that's running the ADDR sequencer, running through a VCA to shape. Got a quite specific chord shape in that I've got a minor seven chord with a ninth. So it's a, it's a minor nine chord shape. Um, and then we've got the pitch, the shift register um, coming, and it is um, taking notes from random outputs and sending them to three oscillators. I've actually got two because I was playing this patch with three and the CPU wasn't, wasn't having it. Okay, so let's listen to that. 
Okay. Now I need to run this patch. Okay, and I'm gonna change the voltage. So you, you can clearly hear, by the way, that that's a chord, that's not mono. So I've got three um, tones, each heading to one oscillator, okay? And it's showing you what notes are sort of coming out and being compounded by the shift register. Okay, so at, at its core, at its core, let me just turn that down, that's how a shift register works. And it's really important what you have in the quantizer. And for example, if you want it to be sneaky, you could like put this into Dorian, for example. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into Dorian where I have the raise six. So now I'm making a chord progression in Dorian. I don't quite know exactly what intervals I'm using, but I know that I can only use these intervals. Okay, so if I play that again, Yeah, you can hear that Dorian coming through, that dreamy, weird. Okay, enough of that. All right, so so that's that. So so that's a shift register at its at its simplest form, is that we're just taking a mono sequence putting it into a VCA to shape it, putting it through a quantizer, and then the shift register is basically multiplying the voltages in that sequence, and it's producing polyphony. It's coming out of the outputs into the oscillators, and those oscillators are then being mixed into a single mixer through a VCA and then into a filter, okay? Now, so you could basically make a shift register and deal with just the harmonic aspects of the chord, of the chord progression. You could do it with just these modules, okay? But you can see that below I've, I've added a lot. Now guys, sorry, I, I have a new computer sitting right next to me and I just need to go through the painful process of the two day installation of this computer and then we'll never have crackling ever again on the Patreon, all right? Um, but right now I'm still on the old machine. So and I'm pushing deep CPU here. So if there is a bit of crackling, I, I apologize. It's just the intensity of these patches. Um, but I promise on the next one, I'll sort out the crackle and I can run 10 million modules and not have any, any glitching. All right, so you can see that in addition to, to, the, to the pitch system, I've also built a whole bunch of gating systems here. Okay, and I'll, I'll just go straight for the killer one. I won't even fuck around because look, I have a trigger sequencer. And that's triggering, it's basically the clock is triggering the trigger sequencer. And I've got some steps turned on that are triggering an LFO, I mean an, an envelope. And that envelope then is going to go ahead and trigger the VCA to open and close. Okay, so now we're going to have like a pulsed voltage. Let's hear that. Oh, Got to run it. Okay, you can hear it pulsing now. And it's pulsing according to this pattern. Okay, now if I change the voltage. Really nice. Okay, it doesn't like the kick. Okay, so it's just a little bit loud and I think that's also why it's struggling so much. Okay, so you can see what an amazing tool that is just gated with a very simple gate. Okay, it sounds amazing. Now, what happens if you say, no, fuck that gate. Okay, so let's unplug that from the VCA. Let's unplug it from the, the VCA and the filter. Okay, now I actually have an LFO, all right? I have an LFO that's running and it's a clocked LFO. I'm gonna put that into the VCA. Okay, I'm also, and then you're gonna hear this properly now. I'm gonna put this into oh, sorry, the LFO. I'm gonna put this into the filter envelope as well. Okay, now listen to that. Now that sounds amazing. Now I'm gonna scroll down so it's not using any GPU. All right, now that sounds insane. Okay. Now, um, I don't want it to crackle, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna press stop. I just want to show you what's happening here because it's a really nice setup. Is that we've got all three voices coming through a mixer, and that mixer is is then coming into this VCA. Okay. 
And instead of having a typical gate that's opening up the VCA, I'm actually opening up the VCA with a clocked LFO. Okay, so the LFO, which has a square wave loaded in, a square wave, if you're ever going to use an LFO for a gate, always use it in square wave, or most of the time use it in square wave. So I've got this LFO, okay, triggering a square wave, which is then opening the VCA. It's also opening the filter cutoff envelope, okay? And the Ninja is that the frequency, this is clocked because it's receiving one of the clock divisions from um, the clock divider. Okay, but the frequency of it is then being modulated by a second LFO, which is not clocked. So this is a free time LFO, and it's modulating the cutoff. Now, you don't even have to hear it. You can just watch. If I change that LFO, it sort of makes the pattern more erratic. Okay, so that's the bottom line. So I can have this, and I can have it really slow. Now, let's just introduce that sound. Hey, keeps on dragging my, my mix up and down here. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so you can hear the chord, and it's got this really nice complex modulation. Now, I don't need the clock. There's no gate. There's no gate. It's all running off the LFO. Now, if I change this, okay, so now, now I'll just run everything. crackling on the base there but how cool is that modulation of the timing okay i love it because the, the the free time lfo is modulating that second lfo and it's creating this really nice almost like afterlife style wobble which i love and again the chord information is coming from a from a single sequence so this is why shift register was the first patch i decided to show you you can make unbelievably powerful music with this thing i'm just going to change one more time Baselines are uh, pushing it over the edge. All right, but I think you guys, you guys get my drift. And um, in a way, I'm almost demonstrating two completely different concepts here. One is um, the shift register itself, which I've, I've sort of um, explained and isolated in the pitch section of the patch. Again, this patch will be up um, with the video, so you guys can download and check it out. So the shift register and just how to take, you know, mono sequence assigns certain values to it that fit a chord shape and then sort of pump that out. I know that what I'm getting is a minor nine chord in some variation, but I'm not sure of the voicing and that's what sort of makes it exciting. And it's, you know, minor nine chords don't really often sound like that. And, and what's giving it the urgent feel is the second half of the patch, which is, um, you know, we've got these clocked LFOs, which are using a square wave to open up the VCA that's controlling the amplitude of the summed um, result of three waveforms running through the mixer. Okay, and then to spice it up even more, we've got a free time LFO that's then modulating the frequency of the LFO that's modulating the VCA. So it's a uh, modulationception, modulationception, modulation on modulation. Okay, so so that's it, guys. That's patch number one. That shift registers. I, I love um, both the LFO concept. Um, opening the VCA, as well as the sort of introduction of polyphony and specific chord shapes through the shift register. So that's my sort of number one advanced technique for, for VCV. Enjoy it. Take the patch. Please um, send me stuff that you make and tell your friends about my fucking Patreon. You know, it's amazing on here. I'm really, uh, excuse the term, but I've got a fucking boner for Patreon at the moment. And not just that, just for music education. And yeah, I feel that you're going to feel my energy in these next few lessons, I hope. Anyway, that's patch number one. Let us move on to number two. Let's have a look at Turing machines. Guys, we're making great time here. Let's move on to patch number two, which is a Turing machine setup. I don't have anything prepared for, for this patch other than my sort of default template. I wanted to show it to you sort of live. It's very, very easy to build a Turing machine. 
patches and it's very easy to use the VCAs to, to shape them, okay? So the only thing that's constant again is that I've got this one over 16 pulse coming into channel two on VCV and it's then getting converted um, to, to CV to the clock and going out to a clock divider and also powering the trigger sequencer if I need it. Um, again, the trigger sequencer, it's just because some of the modules don't pick up the clock from Ableton properly. So this is just sort of a meteory clock, but it also comes in handy for, for a ton of other things, okay? All right, so um, first off, let's make, um, let's make a very simple voice. We'll use the FM operator. And I'm obviously gonna take that voice through the standard VCA. Um, and we'll probably take it through standard filter like ripples. So we'll chain that together. All right, now again, um, let's say I don't want to be in C here. I've got to detune the oscillator itself, okay? So I'm going to wire this in. I'm going to wire this in. I'm going to get this sort of loud buzz. The way I like to do it is just go to VCV rack and I've got a tuner actually loaded as a sort of um, insert plugin. And now we can tune that oscillator down. If you watch the tuner, it's tuning. And let's um, take it, I don't know, let's be in A minor, for example. Okay, so that's close. And then we use the fine tune to take it in. Okay, now that just means that again, the oscillator is tuned to the key that I'm in. Okay and um, the quantizer and everything will stay in the key of C, okay? So you must thinking in two keys in terms of the theory. Okay, so let's turn that down. We know it's in key now, and now I'm gonna um, introduce the Turing machine. Okay, and very simple principle. All we do is we run a clock into the Turing machine. Uh, I wonder, let's run a divided, you know, let's have a divided clock into the Turing machine. No, 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 let's, let's have a full full speed full speed clock okay so i'm gonna mute the kick okay and you see that now that all these all these red lights are going so what it's doing is it's producing random voltages okay and i actually take those voltages out and i'll plug them into the oscillator before the quantizer well there is no quantizer okay and you'll hear just absolute chaos madness all right so that's pretty much the principle of what a Turing machine does is just keeps on generating random voltages, okay? And I'll show you the trick now where we lock those voltages in. But before we do that, let's let's make a VCA. And of course, we're gonna have a quantizer. Um, this guy's cool for today. Um, let's limit this. Again, I invite you guys to um, look at the opportunities to use modal scales, for example, um, Phrygian. Phrygian dominant, Dorian, Mixolydian, all these sort of hybrid major and minor modes. Right now I'm just sticking to, to standard minor and I'm taking some notes out of the scale. So I'll take this six out. Let's at least six in, let's take seven out. Okay, so that's nice. All right, now I'm gonna take the voltage into a VCA and then I'm gonna take that into the quantizer and then it's gonna come back into here. Okay, I know that's not very special yet. Just give me a second. Just to make this more bearable, I'm going to load a little bit of reverb. Now, I'm not going to do that in rack because we are in Ableton, so we might as well take advantage and just use Ableton's reverb. I mean, a, a, a reverb plugin. Okay, so that really enhances, enhances that a lot. Okay, I think about 40% on the mix. Okay. That's fine, 20, all right, great. So now, if I like this melody, I can lock it. So let's lock. Okay, so now that's already very cool because it's locking that melody. And now I can, of course, use the VCA to shape. I love that. I generally tend to like the VCAs when, the, when they're a bit more closed and it sort of just keeps the voicing of whatever chord shape you have or uh, melody shape you have a little bit closer. 
Okay, so that's it. So it produced a whole bunch of random voltages and it doesn't really matter what the random voltage is because I'm shaping it into what I deem acceptable in terms of the musical notes it can play, okay? So I can open that up. It'll play those notes in a different order, just different voicing. Okay, now we can shape and find a new ver. Okay, so you can see just from a melodic generation perspective, how amazing Turing machines are, okay? And you can select the how many steps. Also, I think if you go left, it locks a longer loop. And if you go right, it locks like an eight step loop instead of a 16 one. Um, so there's different ways you can do it. But what's also amazing, what's probably the most amazing is that it also generates random gates, okay? Let's have a look at the gates. So it's an ADSR. Okay. And I'm gonna take one of these random gates. Now these are like more regular gates and these are less regular gates. So I'm gonna take some of the rest, less regular gates. This is, um, if we zoom in, it's two over four. Yeah, this is two plus four, whatever that means. It sounds very cool. Okay, I'm gonna make a nice sort of short-ish envelope. And I'm gonna use that envelope to open the VCA that the synth is running through. Oh, shit, now you see, now that's like a whole new level. Okay, so now, obviously what's happening is it's sending random pulses, you can see with them triggering, and it's closing the VCA unless there is a pulse, and each pulse is quite short because I've got quite a short envelope, okay? And, and that is really nice, I love it. Okay, now the sound itself is very sine wavy. So let's go back to the oscillator and just introduce some harmonics. Okay, and that's awesome. Um, now we could have the ADSR. Okay, running like that, I like that. Okay, now, so, so that's the Turing machine like at, at the most basic level. Now again, I can introduce a new melody just by going here. And it's not just a new melody, it's a new gate pattern as well. All right, really, really love that. That's so nice. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit more reverb on that sound. That's good, okay. Right, now let's close the filter a bit. I love it. Okay, now. Um, what key were we in again? I actually forgot what key we're in. I tuned this oscillator to A, of course. some different gates. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, very, very nice potential there. Turn that filter down a bit. So you can hear how amazing the Turing machine is. I mean, we've basically got like not just one, but multiple ideas for, for a sort of lead for a song there. Um, and it, it happened almost effortlessly, okay? It's almost no effort required to, to shape and come up with these melodies. Again, it's very important what you have in the quantizer. And if I introduce new notes in the quantizer, if I introduce like a mode or scale here, we'd obviously get that different. I mean, just, just for reference, let's put this into Phrygian, okay?
now it's in a phrygian now we can open this up Okay, no, it's also nice to do. That is wild. I'm going to take the, the Phrygian out. What's also really useful is you can just put um, an octave switcher and you can um, take the voltage from the quantizer. And before it hits the volt per octave, you can just take it into this octave flipper and maybe take it down an octave, which is really nice. Wait, come here. Oh, that is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, now once again, just on the Turing machine, as soon as I flip this, I get a new voltage. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, now listen, it's, it's very nicely timed. You get the vibe, and it's very easy to change this melody. All right, now the envelope is, of course, extremely important. And we get to the So I'm sure you guys can hear the sort of mind-numbing amount of possibilities. I think I'm running over my 15 minutes in this lesson. I really love the Turing machine. Uh, I'll show you one or two other little things um, just in terms of adding some animation to that to the sound, which will sort of set us up for, for the next lesson where we're really going to animate. Okay, we're going to really animate sounds. So let's get... This is a really cool sequencer that I like to use to animate things. Um, dual envelope. There we go. Love this guy. Okay. Um, so let's think about this and let's also get one of these dual sequences. All right, so again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna clock this sequence. Sequencer. Come on, mate. I'm just gonna clock it. All right, now don't don't lose me here, guys. This is this is going to be epic, okay? So I'm going to clock the sequence um, in the trigger. I'm going to set it to only four steps, okay? And um, I'm going to set like low, low, pretty fucking high, and then low, okay? Now, what is this for? This is not for notes. Remember, anything can get sequenced in modular. Anything can get sequenced, okay? So what I'm actually gonna do with this is I'm gonna output it, and we're gonna have it affect, we're gonna have it affect the release and the decay of the amp envelope, okay? That's gonna be the first thing that it does. Okay, and at the same time, I'm also going to make another ADSR another envelope, and that's going to look a little bit different, maybe a little bit uh, choppier on the sustain, a little bit shorter on the release, and we'll connect that to the filter envelope, and we'll turn that CV up all the way, and 
at the same time, the sequencer is gonna molt out those voltages. It's gonna molt them out. Um, and it's also gonna affect the decay. Sorry. It's gonna affect the decay and the release of the filter envelope, but a little bit less. I'll turn that CV back there. Okay, so bear with me here. That, that looks great, except this needs to go there. Okay, so let's just listen to that. Okay, now watch this envelope, it's moving. Okay, it's moving per step. And in fact, this is probably too fast. So I wanna clock this with a, with a clock divided signal. Let's clock it a little bit slow. Okay, so on this step, we should be getting much longer decay. Okay, you can hear a little automation of the envelopes. You can see them as well. There we go. Now we got a really a lot of momentum and aliveness from this automation of the envelopes. Let's make this short, buddy. Okay, it's not quite behaving like I'd like it to. Oh, it needs a gate. What an absolute idiot. Hold on a second. I knew something was up there. Um, this ADSR is getting a gate from here. So it sh too should get a gate from here. There we go. Watch this. Oh, yeah. Right now, I actually went ahead and built this whole patch with FM operator, and I've been using it the whole day in, in this way where I run a little voltage into FM. And for some reason, it's not working. So I had to take a break um, and just replace the oscillator. And I, so I swapped FM op with plates. For some reason, I know that this technique works with FM op because I'm doing it. And I'll even show you in the next patch that I, that I did it with the FM op. But unfortunately, for whatever reason, the voltage just isn't connecting from VCV today. So, but it doesn't matter because I, equally as cool idea. I've got the exact same setup here, right? Um, I've just got it with the plates oscillator and sawtooth, okay? And let's listen to it quick. Yeah, it's got that really nice um, automation of the filter envelope, which is fucking cool. And if we open this up, okay, it's a fucking nice ass sound. Okay, probably turn this down a little bit. Okay, so as I said, my um, next level is to start animating these patches. Now this is animated because we've got a sequencer that's doing nothing but sequencing the um, length of the decay and release times on the envelopes. And that's great, as I was pointing out in, in the last few minutes, okay? But I wanna create another degree of animation here. Now, as I was saying, this um, sequencer has also got a pulsed um, voltage that it can do. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm sending this pulse voltage. Every time that pulse voltage happens on this step, I'm sending that pulse out to open an envelope. Okay. And that envelope is just going to open up a VCA and a little, little bit of voltage coming through. Now, what is coming into the VCA? What's coming into the VCA is a modulation oscillator. This is actually an audio rate oscillator. So just bear with me here. Um, this is just a random, basically like a random, bzz, like a random buzz. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it, okay, to modulate the FM on the oscillator, the frequency modulation, which is really cool. Okay, so just bear with me here and check this out. Okay, so there's my sound. Now, here's this little pulsed voltage that's only happening on this step. And I'm going to output it and I'm going to take it into FM and then turn that part all the way up. Okay, you hear that? Okay, now that's animating a step-based um, modulation of the FM. Now, remember it's running through an envelope. So if I increase the release, 
Okay, so it's getting really crazy. Even though it's step-based, I can um, use the release to sort of increase the time that that FM lasts for. Okay, now it obviously gets really crazy when the, when the filter is open, but when you tuck that filter down, it sounds sick. It's just got that boom. I love that, whoa. Okay, put a little bass line. Let's drop this to another voltage. Oh, that is super sexy. And here we go. Okay, now let's play with that modulation. Stream, but you get the vibe. Now, let's get a new voltage. Okay, it's very intense, I know. It's just very long. There we go, that sounds great. Very nice. Okay, now the, the honest to God, the honest to God truth is, I did prefer it with the FM op because the FM ops FM modulation is just a little bit more elegant than plates. Plates just kind of takes the pitch and goes what? The FM op because it's a um, it's a um, FM oscillator. Okay, um, it it sounds very different when you modulate the pitch. Okay, so bottom line is, look guys, I, I'm just showing you that there's another level of animation of these sounds that you can do in VCV, which is fucking so cool. And it's really custom. Like this is not just a little modular bleep and blah, but like a little subtractive synth. It's really got character. It's so uniquely modular. And that's what I absolutely love about it, okay? Um, and yeah, what I'm showing you here is just that we're creating a pulsed step-based step modulation. It's sending out a gate, opening up an envelope and letting through whatever's coming through this VCA. In this case, it's an audio rate oscillator that is then um, modulating the FM per step. Sounds pretty crazy in plates just by the nature of the FM circuitry. Um, and in the next patch, I'll show you this sort of concept happening in FM up, which actually sounds really smooth and liquid. It like changes the tone. So, so that's that. Um, one more quick listen. And again, I'll, I'll, I'll save this. I've, I've got this saved as um, Turing extras. I'll, I'll save this and we can um, have some fun with it. Let's take it up an octave. That's quite nice. That's actually really nice. Okay, so you can hear that nice sweep. Okay, I'm obviously going super extreme on the modulation. So I can even turn this VCA down. And we can just have a little bit of pitch modulation long. Have a little bit. No, oh, that's nice. That is really hot. Okay, now let's open up the voltage. Oh my good lord. Oh my good lord. All right, that is 
absolutely fucking ridiculous. I love it. That is a perfect example of, um, you know, where, where the modular sound design is at for me right now. And um, just to review very briefly, I know we've done a lot of reviewing, but just to review, very simple sequence. This entire melody is actually being generated by a Turing machine, which is a random voltage generator. It's being clocked um, by the one over 16 pulse that's coming into Ableton, converted to CV, powered into the clock, a whole bunch of random voltages. We've locked one particular melody, and we've taken the resultant voltage out into a VCA, reducing, scaling the voltage of that, taken into a quantizer where I'm only allowing very specific voicing. <coughs> the six note in the minor scale, this is a, a minus six note, that's obviously a minus seven. It's giving it that really edgy, like dark techno sort of feel, which we're looking for. And then I'm taking it out into oct, which just lets me control the range, the octave. We've got this down one octave from its default pitch. We had it down two, which was sounding great, but a little bit bassy. So this is sort of the optimal range. Um, and that's it. And that's coming into volt per octave. And then the, the sound itself is coming into a VCA. That's coming into a filter. And most importantly, both the VCA and the filter are being controlled by envelopes. And those envelopes themselves are having the decay and release times sequenced by a secondary voltage sequencer. All right. So that's what's giving the sound that degree of animation. And um, if we just go back to the sound and play. You can hear that little da -da 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 that's happening. That's all thanks to the volume automation. You can actually see those vo um, envelopes moving. And you can see that that's the filter envelope and this is the amp envelope. And um, it's creating a crazy amount of uh, interest in the sound. It's very, very cool. All right, and then last step is we've got a pulsed modulation. So I've called this the animation sequencer for a reason and sort of showing you how to extend and animate patches. Um, this also has a, a singular sort of step voltage on this step that is coming out of this output. It's opening, it's triggering an envelope, which is opening a VCA, and that is sending an ever so slight amount of FM modulation to the, the plates, okay? If we take that up, it gets crazy, and it can sound cool. You know, you can have a little bit of that. Okay, so you can automate this, the um, potential for creativity here in terms of where these modulations happen in the sound is almost endless, all right? But I, I'm just choosing to have a little bit of sort of longer form, more subtle, graded modulation. Okay, sounds awesome. Here's the bass and kick. Love it. Now, don't forget, not that you would forget, but we can change this voltage. All right. So that is that, that's sort of animating uh, modular sounds level one, where we've actually got dedicated sequences that deal specifically with voltages that either govern envelope levels, um, or they output specific, um, you know, gates or triggers that then open envelopes or VCAs that then let through things like FM modulation. It could be sync. Another great thing to modulate on, on oscillators is sync, is sync. So you have like a, a voltage that you sync the oscillator to, but that voltage is not on all the time. So you're turning synchronization on and off for the oscillator, which is another really, really nice technique. I think with that, let's wrap. That was the Turing machine and also sort of patch animation volume one. Um, next up, I'm gonna close this um, VCV lesson with patch animation volume two. So I'm gonna pull in a really dang patch that I've been making on the other computer. I'm going to pull that in here and we're going to have a have a little look at it. Um, and you can see sort of where this concept goes. And then that's it, guys. We've done shift registers, Turing machines, um, patch animation, and then we've done envelope sequencing um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And then kind of also implied also um, just um, using modes in the modular environment. Um, and I sort of just hinted at that in the shift register showing you guys that, for example, um, you know, if I wanted to make this into Phrygian, for example, I could just put the flat two in there. Okay, I could make this in Phrygian dominant, 
by going flat two uh, major thirds. And I've got root note, flat two, major third, four, five, flat six, and flat seven. And that is the Phrygian dominant scale, which is the um, sort of typical, the nice version of the Middle Eastern scale that I really like. So if you sort of bring that up now, it's going to have a completely different feel. Very odd. I know that is fucking wild, but it's just... Frigging in the base. Yeah, you can hear, I mean, you can hear definitely that. That's in a different mode. And, and I really like Frigging Dominance, very cool. By the way, if you haven't watched it, I did an entire lesson on Phrygian Dominant, which is up on the Patreon. Somewhere in the top three lessons on the, on the post. Very cool, cool lesson. Okay, so that's a Phrygian Dominant version of the same roof. Okay, so I was just, uh, the reason I'm telling you that is, the reason I'm telling you that is because we also kind of covered how to do modal interpretations in this lesson as well. So we've kind of done done four concepts already. We've done Turing machines, shift registers, patch animation, and then including modal harmonic thinking, melodic thinking in how we use quantizers, okay? And finally, I'm gonna wrap up with like advanced patch animation by bringing in a really cool patch that I made and just going through it. And then that's that guys. It's actually two o'clock in the morning here. I'm still recording this lesson, but I'm having a lot of fun. So let's wrap it up with the, with the final patch. And uh, yes, we can all get on with our lives. All right, guys, so you're not going to believe this, but as I tried to change that melody, my entire patch actually just um, failed and the whole thing crashed. So, of course, I came back and I rebuilt pretty much the exact same patch. It'll never be exactly the same, but it's uh, pretty much the same principle. Got the Turing machine, random voltage, going through a VCA, similar notes in the quantizer. It's detuned by an octave, and then it's going into the FM op. Okay. And, um, if we just go put like a random melody in here, let's just run this. Turn this up a bit. I um, didn't detune the oscillator to, to, to um, A this time, so we're just in C minor. Okay, so a whole bunch of random melodies, let's lock it. Very nice, I love that. Very, very nice. Okay, so that's my favorite melody all day from the Turing Machine anyway. Very nice phrasing on the gates as well. Okay, now um, one thing that's really important um, and where I was heading now, because we've pretty much um, got the Turing Machine thing down, um, where I was heading is I was just going to add a different level of animation to the sound. Okay, that's why I was sort of signing off. And you can see here that I've got a, a clock sequencer and I'm controlling the decay time of the envelopes, both the amp ADSR and the filter envelope decay. You can see this is the filter envelope. It's only got the decay time. So I'm sequencing the decay and release times for both the filter amp and, and amp envelopes. And I'm doing that with a sort of voltage sequencer. So just remember in, in modular, you can sequence anything. And what that is doing is it's creating a lot of nice movement in terms of the ADSR. So it's moving around a lot. It's really nice. So you can actually see those envelopes modulating. You can see them sort of getting longer when it gets to this step. Okay, I can make that really long. Let's make it full. Let's make those too long. Okay, so we just start to get some different... I like that because it's it's kind of a bit more mysterious. Okay, fantastic. 
All right, now if I take the filter down, you can hear how animated that filter envelope is. It's very cool. Let's take the decay up on the filter envelope. And I actually do want to automate the um, release time as well. There we go. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, so this sequencer is doing nothing but sequencing the attack, I mean the release and decay times of the amp and the filter envelope, and then by different amounts that I'm opening up the, the CV. So it's super fucking cool. I love it. And then if we sort of take that down a little bit, default value on the decay. Oh, it gets that like nice ratchet feel. Whoa, so nice, man. Let's play some bass. I mean, see. So, so fucking cool. I absolutely love it. We can really open that sound up. Now, remember, we've still got the VCA. So firstly, what's amazing is this is all coming. This entire melody was generated initially from a single random voltage, which we've shaped with the VCA. Okay, I'm going to leave it here because I love the gates, but let's adjust the level of voltage on the VCA. Okay, so there are probably hundreds of different voltages and I can still go change what is in the quantizer. Let's add D. That's really nice. Okay. I'm going to drop that decay a little bit more. Ooh, shit, that is hot. My God, I think that's the hottest sound I've ever made in modular. Anyway, you get the point. So we could go on and on. And of course, um, you know, when you're doing this type of technique with the VCA, not every value is ever going to work on the VCA. And what I sort of recommend is just having like a very specific voltage sequence or something that's sequencing specific values. Or you can just have multiple VCAs that are then going into a sequential switch and you can switch them out. So you can have this VCA duplicated and you can then take that into a sequential switch and you can switch them out. If you want to see that, we can do a super advanced um, VCV lesson next and I can show you guys that sort of stuff, which like sequential switching and really specific changes in these melodies. But you can hear how incredible that lead is, man. It's so alive, okay? Now, we've almost, um, as I said to you, we've gone way beyond the Turing machine because this is now a Turing machine that's generating a melody. And then we're using the gates to trigger um, filter envelopes and ADSR, but then we're animating those envelopes with a different sort of axis of animation. And that's happening from this um, step sequencer here, which could be any step sequencer, okay? And I wanna continue this theme because the next and final theme that I'm gonna do in this uh, VCV lesson is just animating patches, animating sounds. And um, I'll sort of do a little bit of a simpler version of what I'm gonna do in the next patch. I'll just do it here quickly, okay? so. All right, guys, we're going to sign off with one final patch, something something really cool, something pretty, not fancy, but just taking the um, animation aspect of these patches to the next level. Um, pretty much the same thing that we've been doing. I've got an ADDR, VCA, quantizer, and then an octave flipper that's coming into FM op. And I'm going to um, just play you the, the sequence. It's quite a cool sequence. Okay, nice, pretty, I've got a minus seven chord in the quantizer, so it's pretty, 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 pretty. Sounds cool. And I've got the gates running off this Euclidean sequencer, so we can really change, using the Euclidean sequencer, we can really change um, how often the gates are happening, so.
Okay, so that's great as well. If you could have like a really simple phrase. And that is also fantastic. You can have a really complicated phrase. Just depending on how many gates you have in the Euclidean sequencer. So again, I upload this patch. It's a really fun patch to play with. Okay, now the fun hasn't really started because I think I'm just going to let some um, solo the VCV. There we go. This has got the bass as well from Ableton. I'll turn that down one notch. Okay, now we can really zone in on the sound. Okay, so again, I've, I've got these sequences. And the voltage from this sequence is coming out and it's affecting the release okay, of this, uh, of this um, envelope that's controlling the sound. So it sounds really cool. But I want to do one more thing. And you can see that I've got some of these steps turned on. And they're going to output, okay, they're going to open, the, the pulse out is going to open this envelope, which is then going to open the VCA. All right. So, and again, I have... Um, a modulation oscillator which is the same oscillator I used it's called the LVCO and that's just generating a random frequency which is now coming through this VCA okay so let's connect it now to FM listen to that that is insane okay it's gonna take the sound to a whole nother level okay I love FM but it can't be on all the time it's got to be modulating all right so now you, you can actually see uh, once again this sequencer over here, um, these pulses are the pulses that are triggering this envelope to open and then let this um, VCA, let that FM through, okay? And I've got quite a long release time. So if I reduce the release, it gets a lot less intense. It's just a little pulse. You can actually see how short that modulation pulse is. But you can still hear it, it like rings the oscillator out. Okay, I think it sounds awesome. All right, now when I increase the release, it gets more aggressive. It starts to take over. Okay, now that is like another level of sound. Absolutely love it. Okay, now when we change the VCA now, that is truly, truly an amazing sound. It's got so much character. And that ringing FM, which is controlled by the pulses and then an, uh, an envelope, it is the sort of key to the sound. Maybe that could be done in Octave even. You can hear how live that sound is. Sounds great. Take that down. There we go. Because it's now it's kind of on and off with the FM. Wow, that is incredible. Oh my God, that is such an incredible sound. Guys, I'm in love. I love that ringing of the FM, it is so gorgeous. Okay, now just, just as an AB comparison, let me take the FM off. I mean, it's a nice sound, but it's not nearly as interdimensional and sort of otherworldly and compelling when it doesn't have that step-based modulation. Okay, so it's incredible what that modulation does. Listen to that, man. It's unbelievable. Now, also, um, the actual frequency that's modulating, that the modulation oscillator could also change. Oh, my word. That is incredible. Yes, yeah, so you can hear how um, sort of dynamic and interesting that is. Oh my god, I'm in love. Now I'll take the envelope down, clean that modulation. 
Obviously you can take it, you can sort of just have the envelope come down and it just controls the FM amount on the modulator. Oh, I love it. Oh, listen to how it's ringing there. Yeah, I'm absolutely, absolutely in love with the sound. It's so, so great. Um, guys, this has been an amazing, amazing session. Let me kill these drums. This has been an amazing, amazing session. I've had so much fun today. Um, I taught the live class today and then went straight in and recorded this video for like four or five hours. So I've been patching for 10 hours today. It's been a crazy day. I've learned a lot. I've taught a lot. Um, I hope you guys had fun today. I had a shitload of fun today and it, I, I really feel like today clicked a lot of things into place for me that I've sort of been trying to develop so if you have any questions obviously hit me up reply to this I love comments guys don't be scared don't be scared of the comments you know drop comments on the patreon or even on the YouTube link because I'm, I'm putting a few of these videos up on YouTube just to sort of promote things because I want to build obviously a bigger community of, of people that are into this vibe so we can start having bigger and better classes and exchanging better ideas and obviously then I can have money to upgrade my studio, can't I? Because I really would like to up the level of, of the stuff and start doing next level videos. But yeah, it's all a process. Um, as you can hear, I think um, demonstrated my point that um, these sporadic modulations are incredibly powerful. I mean, that's one of the hottest sounds I've ever heard in my life. And that's a single oscillator, yeah? And we can change the melody out with the VCA. So it's just, it's just unbelievable. Just to go back to it quickly, and just so you can see, that's no modulation, no FM, a little bit, even a little bit's amazing, just sort of rings the sound out, and then past that threshold of release, starts leaking, and it rings out differently according to different intervals, that's what's so amazing about FM. All right, now last thing, don't forget, this is all running off a Euclidean sequencer, so we can still go to Euclidean and turn that down. Alright guys, it's getting late, it's actually very late, 3 o'clock in the morning, it's been an epic day, thank you so much for joining me on the deep dive into VCV, as I said all of these patches will be uploaded with the video, so um, dig deep, don't be scared to hit me up with questions or comments, I'm available for private lessons as well, um, and pretty much anything else you guys need, I'm going to be a lot more active on the Patreon, in fact I posted my WhatsApp number on the Patreon. So that's how sort of committed I am. Don't be scared to, to message me. Obviously related to Patreon stuff. No dick pics unless you really want to. Um, and that's it. Have, have a beautiful day. Um, I hope you find this inspiring. Please let me know. And next week, Tuesday, I will see you for just a Watch Me Produce session. We're going to do multiple sessions and we're going to make a new track in the Patreon. 
and finish it in the Patreon. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that's um, where we're going next week in the live classes. And uh, by then I'll have the new computer as well. So yeah, have a creative week, guys. Lovely seeing you and chatting to you today. And um, see you soon. Ciao.